my journey into crypto also started thanks to NFTs in 2020, you know, late 2020 and early 2021. Mm -hmm. So I first became an NFT collector, uh, then co-founded the NFT marketplace uh, with Vazirex, then actually bought my first crypto, you know. Uh, So that's how the whole journey began. Crypto markets have been the buzz for some time now and have got a number of us inquisitive of the entire digital asset space. The Web3 ecosystem has a lot to offer from decentralized finance protocols, metaverse and gaming projects, there's custody solutions for utmost security of your funds, and not to miss the non-fungible tokens, giving way to a range of Web2 companies to explore the Web3 space. So today we have a very interesting guest with us, Vishakha Singh, who is an NFT strategist at Koto. But not just that, she's had a rich background as an Indian actor, film producer, and a startup entrepreneur as well. Breaking the stereotypes in the world of cryptocurrencies, she co-founded India's first NFT marketplace and was also the vice president of Vazirex NFT marketplace. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today, Vishaka. Welcome to Curated X, and I really look forward to the conversation today. Thank you so much, Shavi. Perfect. So to get the ball rolling, uh, it would be great to know a bit about your background and how you ventured your way from being an actor to a film producer and an entrepreneur and then finding your way in Web3. Uh, so, you know, when I was an actor, uh, for an actor, audience is everything and audience is nothing but your community. Uh, then when I became a film producer, especially an independent film producer, you realize the importance of your community because they are the ones who are going to go and buy your tickets. Um, and that is when I got interested in in SaaS tools to engage communities. And 2017 is when I got into the startup space as well. And um, I co-built the I co-built India's first celebrity chat management tool called uh, Iconic Bot. Uh, and what we did was we basically leveraged. Um, all communication on, uh, you know, on Facebook with our communities, but via the messenger chatbot. Uh, so launched this chatbot for, you know, various stars like Vijay's, uh, superstar Vijay's, uh, South Indian film Mercil, Samantha's U-Turn, Kamal Hassan sir's Vishwarupa, my own film Fukre, etc. So that was my starting point. So I realized community was at the center of everything that we were doing, from an actor to a film producer to a startup entrepreneur as well. Then we built a SaaS tool, which was basically... Uh, about influencers on Instagram being able to uh, engage with their communities by giving automated replies based on their personas. So built a tool, a tool called 45 app in Toronto and I was able to answer a reply back to 400 comments on my Instagram you know, post within 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. They were all unique responses, et cetera. So I was able to engage and build my community there. Uh, then the pandemic of course hit us and uh, as, as things would have it, Pandemic is when the the entire blockchain ecosystem boomed and NFTs boomed. And we said, okay, if you're not able to meet people in real life uh, or in the real space, and you know there is this new tool called NFT that is available, how can we build communities around it and how can we leverage it? And that's how the entire journey happened. So people, you know, especially techies start about blockchain and they say, oh, you know what I discovered, I was into crypto since 2012, 2013. My journey into crypto also started thanks to NFTs in 2020 you know, late 2020 and early 2021. Mm -hmm. So I first became an an NFT collector, uh, then co-founded the NFT marketplace uh, with Vazirex, then actually bought my first crypto, you know. Uh, So that's how the whole journey began. And I've been quite enjoying it. Wonderful. It's interesting how each of us have our different ways of exploring this space, how we just end up landing into something like this, how we get interested in, okay, now what, now what, and it's it's entirely a rabbit hole that we get into and then we make our way in this space, essentially. Right. So why Absolutely. So, uh, Vishaka, looking at Koto now, which stands for Come Together and really holds a lot of significance of giving that space for women to get a safe place uh, to get their ideas, thoughts and work out through the community. Um, if you can shed some light on uh, a very brief idea on what Koto does and how it crosses the path with the Web3 ecosystem. So Koto is a social community app. It's exclusively for women or persons who identify themselves as non-binary. Now, you know, even you will understand, Chavi, every time we go on any social media platform that we are on, we will at some point or the other get trolled, unless and until, of course, our, our profile is private. Uh, it is not a safe space. 
social media is not a safe place to, for for people generally and definitely not a safe space for women to be in mm-hmm. uh with koto the biggest advantage is that it is absolutely safe because the moment you log on to koto you cannot get into koto without an authentication mm-hmm. you need to click your picture or or you know upload a video or uh, upload your identification etc and then only get into koto so everybody who is a part of koto is a legit credible individual verified by us that is a huge advantage the second thing is once you have this sort of safety or trust created we know that the conversations we are going to have is going to be in a safe place there is no judgment there right. so that is another advantage the other thing is as now i'm not a content creator but by virtue of having been an actor uh, you know a few years ago i do have a substantial amount of uh, community following right now what do i do with the with, with this community following so tomorrow if i have i mean if i put out a post i get a couple of likes mm. i can't take those likes to the bank and then cash them but with koto because it's being built on the principles of decentralization and and you know and what is decentralization at the end of the day it it represents equality it requ- it represents transparency uh, uh participative ownership uh, all of that so uh, and democracy so at koto every time you create content you a get rewarded for it you can also reward your community for participating through koto tokens um you can you can actually a as an individual creator leverage it if you build a community around it your community can together become one entity or you know that can take uh, you know, decisions autonomous decisions and build something over what you're trying to create so there are a lot of advantages to koto um so i think when i whenever i look at a facebook or a twitter versus koto for me the natural choice is always koto because it's just safe and i get i get rewarded for my time which is great you know otherwise it's just mindless scrolling uh, you're not even learning anything here you get creators who are creating meaningful content uh, you can discover meaningful content within much shorter time span compared to any other social media platform i mean i can go on and on about koto <laughs> absolutely and it's very interesting to you know right uh, like we see how the creator economy has been booming uh, since last few years and bringing a decentralized angle to it along with building specifically i think the most important overarching objective of having a space safe place for women i think that really um, takes it all and it's it's very important how the all the different worlds are brought together in this one whole which makes Absolutely. it all the more interesting and really look forward to what the future holds for go to as well going forward um so talking specifically about your role now as an nft strategist at koto so i uh, would love to know how um, we know how you ventured into exploring nfts as a domain so um, what brought you as an nft strategist here and what is it that you want to achieve in this role so you know when i co-founded wazirx nft marketplace um, we were driven by i think the entire um, uh, the it was just the entire enthusiasm of the ecosystem back then right in 2021 it was a different world then right in the last few years people have wisened up and there is much more awareness about nfts but in the last two years i've also realized that the nft space especially uh it's inherently men who have benefited from this space mm-hmm. and the, the, it's not about being right or wrong but that is the way things are mm-hmm. and even when you talk of blockchain blockchain's biggest offering i would say is capital and technology right women unfortunately have not had access even in the web2 space have not had much access to capital or technology um, again various factors associated but that is also, that is something we've seen happening in the web3 space as well so even when you look at uh, companies that have made blockchains or you know built blockchains the the top tier people or or even the top most people hardly have any women representation right, right? at koto it is very very different i mean i think almost 70% of our workforce is women so we, even when we're designing the app it is that yeah. now uh when when we talk of the nft strategy here the whole idea was we are building an app a social community app for women on the principles of decentralization how do we empower women with nfts yeah. right uh, at wazirx nft i realized that 
only 10 to 15 percent of women creators were women uh, you know of, of the creators were women right. collectors there were hardly two percent women collectors and we of course tried to increase it and we got the number up to six percent uh, women collectors who were buying nfts mm -hmm. So at Koto, the whole intention is that we need to educate women about NFTs as to how they can leverage it because NFTs are not just a tool of, uh, you know, monetizing your, your current IP that you own, but they can be a great source of raising funds for any anything that you're building. They can be a great tool to, uh, you know, authenticate your IP uh, on the blockchain. So the whole idea right now is let's design a roadmap with through which women creators non binary persons can leverage nfts across all uh, all the the steps of content creation and community building right and that is why i'm here you know so we have started off with uh, nft badges creation for the first round of creators the first 5000 creators that we are onboarding uh, we're also working towards uh, Women, a women's exclusive NFT marketplace and a DAO. So all that is uh, in the pipeline. Wonderful thing. A lot of interesting things in store then yes. to be uh, unleashed uh, in the coming future. So right. um, probably building on those lines, uh, like you also spoke, right? We've seen growing use cases of NFTs. Um, so talking about one such use case is probably a, in terms of community management. So how do you think NFTs in general can disrupt the community management space? So again, you know, the very fact that you are on blockchain, especially at this point in time, you've got like-minded individuals, you know, coming onto this space. That's one. Two, um, earlier when, you know, when I was uh, with the, the other NFT marketplace, we realized that when it comes to creators, when they are trying to reach their collectors or buyers, by virtue of being on blockchain, the intermediaries are cut out. You're able to reach your, your target audience or your collectors directly. Right. Uh, tell me, what was the exact question? So in terms of uh, NFTs, how do you think NFTs can play a role in disrupting the community management space in general? Sure. So now here what happens is uh, when you are now, now who is your community? Your community could be your well-wishers. Your community could be your collectors who are buying your uh, NFT, so to say, or the content that you're creating or consuming the content that you're creating. And your community can also be your future set of investors should you decide to, you know, if you are an artist and you want to probably foray into opening your own art gallery at some point, right? right? So your current set of art collectors can also become your investors because they've been your cheerleaders from day one. Mm -hmm. But the best thing about NFTs being on blockchain, I always say, you know, when people say oh, NFTs and crypto, I always say it's it's the blockchain that's barb, the barb of everything that we are doing. The advantage is that your community wins with you. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, on Facebook and any on any other social media platform, you may like any kind of post, but you don't get rewarded for it. Right. With NFTs and with especially uh, the the you know uh, inception of tokenization you can reward your community by you know by achieving certain milestones and rewarding rewarding them with certain tokens and which means which in turn gives them a an ownership into what you are building and again this is very important why because we've realized that some of the youngest nft creators in the country have been just 10 years old 12 years old the youngest nft colors collectors have been 14 year olds Right. And this number is only growing. I have my own nieces and nephews who now say, please don't give us anything in Shagun, you know, give us crypto or give us NFTs. Wow. So it's this generation. Yeah. This is the future generation that you want to, uh, uh, you know, basically invest in. So if you are a brand, you need to be in the Web3 space. You need to partner with the right NFT artist or, or you know, blockchain entrepreneurs to be in this space to build a community because it is happening. Web3 is happening. So this is the way to go. Definitely. And I really like how you put it because it's it's actually becoming a lot more collaborative. It's now with essentially transitioning from just having followers to having a community of our own. And that community plays a role in the creator's success as well. You could have DAOs where you're just actually people are contributing to how you can grow together. 
people get rewarded, like you mentioned, in terms of getting different access. And I think it's really people are getting involved in who they're enjoying watching or the, the kind of content that they're even liking. So, right. In fact, you know, Ravi, um, if I may just add to that, I remember a couple of uh, actors, representatives had reached out to us and they wanted to drop NFTs. And, you know, not everybody gets the ethos of Web3. Uh, you need to be you need to be a hustler and you need to be very entrepreneurial in nature to understand what Web3 stands for. Uh, so this is something I keep telling every actor's manager or representative who come, reaches out to us is that your NFT collector or the community member is not your regular fan from your tier two, tier three cities who wants a photo with ma'am or sir, you know, or with their favorite actors. This is your potential and uh, investor. Right. These are people who are innovators. They are startup entrepreneurs. Uh, they are crypto traders. Yeah. They are, uh, you know, Gen Alpha. Uh, uh, you know, who who are into this space, and it's very important to understand this the community demographics right. and their motivation behind being in this space. Definitely, because like you said, right, it's not just um, that they're that they're wanting to get this photo. It's an investment that they're doing. Uh, they're, they're devoting their time, money into it also at times. And they're also wanting to generate some return out of it. What do I get in return in case I'm interested in this? So I think, and, yeah. and like you said, right, we're getting the newer generation getting too much involved into it. So the content creator needs to up their game as well and understand what's happening in this space. Absolutely. So um, considering the current market turmoil right now, Shaka, what we see, uh, Web3 has seen a number of fallouts in the last few months. We started with Terra Luna, Celsius, 3AC, FTX being the more recent one. So in general, what is your view on the current market scenario and where do you see the future of digital assets? So I think every market goes through its corrections. And uh, of course, the, the reputation of crypto and NFTs and primarily crypto has taken a beating. I have, I'm sure you probably also must have had a lot of people reach out to saying how much crypto have you lost? So have you quit crypto? Are you still at it? Uh, you know, parents and relatives uh, advising you. But here's the thing. Uh, crypto is not bad. Blockchain is not bad. NFTs is not bad. It's the people's greed that we'll have to blame. Uh, you know, technology cannot be bad. Um uh, of course, we are in the midst of crypto winter, but I think, as I said, it's a correction. The The real players, the builders, the, the hodlers will stay on and we will continue building. What we have to remember is, and, and digital assets, yes, they are here to stay. You know, the new breed of internet is already being built. There is no looking back. What we have to remember is that and I have seen a lot of my friends uh, who are building in this space, especially who are from STEM and tech background, are very passionate about the principles of decentralization, which is a great thing. So when they're building, they, on, they only want to collaborate and participate with people who only, uh, who you know, even in terms of raising funds, their, their, their stance is we will only raise funds from a Web3 VC. We will only have conversations with a Web3 community. And I feel this is where we need to pause and reflect because we can't grow until the whole ecosystem grows and the ecosystem will grow and benefit only if we are able to educate players in the Web2 space. Right. Uh, every brick in the wall matters. Today, when a Solana suffers because of its association and funding from FTX, uh, I think it's a very strong case for a Web3 company to raise funds from a Web2 VC. Uh, maybe I'm generalizing. It's, it's, it's just my opinion. But I think Web2 players and Web3 players have to work together because there, there are things to learn from, from, you know, from the DeFi system. Uh, there are things to learn uh, from, from the Web2 uh, fintech system. Why not just work together and, you know, create a better system altogether. Absolutely. And like we've seen, right, the kind of transition from Web 1 to Web 2 to Web 3, uh, we had Web 1 and then we built Web 2 on top of it. And hence, yes. we just cannot go out and say, okay, now it will be a decentralized framework. We need to understand how the centralized framework works. What are the loopholes in that? What do we need to correct here? And only then we can embrace Web 3 in the very right ways. 
and like you also Absolutely. said right um it it is time for crypto winter but this is the time when people who trust the technology people who understand the depths of it we do get a lot of projects being built only at these times and then they outshine when we are back um, in in the normal market conditions too so i think right. it, it's just a matter of time for the technology to settle in um see what's here to stay um, get the other things out of the way and uh, just see see uh, how it goes from here so um a number of web2 firms right like we have been talking to um, have also starting to make their way uh, in digital assets through maybe launching their nfts getting into the metaverses and a lot of focus on creator economy as well as music nfts is coming up so how do you see this panning out in the future i think when it comes to nfts um and i i usually talk from the the uh, global south perspective i think the market's only going to boom further because nfts whatever said and done are still uh, they're digital assets they are still safer than crypto yeah. because with nfts uh, you can actually like at quota what we are doing is we're enabling the buying and selling of nfts uh through fiat currency as well yeah. so that itself reduces a certain barrier yeah. uh so nfts i think are going to be huge because even even now you know if you look at global south it is primarily countries which have a lot of disparity in income uh, or developing countries that are seeing uh, a higher nft adoption right so be it be it a vietnam or philippines or thailand yeah. uh venezuela brazil these are the countries that are really uh, taking to nfts and interestingly in fact i believe venezuela and thailand are the only two countries that have more women adoption uh, of nfts than men which is very very interesting mm -hmm. but these are also the countries where we the creators had to be at the mercy of uh, the the buyer or the producer or the collector who was uh, you know taking basically buying their art or their their ip with nfts this is changing so i think we're going to see great use cases emerge in terms of uh uh fundraising for films uh you know musicians being able to directly uh launch their albums and songs uh art of course is a very very successful nft use case but i'm hoping to see more art galleries participate mm -hmm. in the nft space because especially from the the global south perspective and india especially uh art galleries haven't been very very open to participating in the nft space i'm hoping that happens because if you compare the scene with art galleries in india versus say something in in austria now austria is a country known for music and opera and and uh, you know all the beautiful artworks they have heavily taken to nfts yeah. so i i'm seeing the market i'm hoping the market will boom and i'm seeing that this market nft especially will be uh, the sellers market and the the global north will become the the buyers market for nfts lovely um so probably now taking a step away from nfts in general if i have to ask you what are some of the other use cases in the web3 stack that you are bullish on or you find them interesting that are being solved for currently or you wish that they should be worked on in the coming future so i was just today uh thinking of uh, uninstalling twitter and downloading master mastodon right and uh, i was like well since i am in the web3 space why not just use all web3 products so i'm i'm extremely bullish on that and, and i'm also very bullish on all the gaming applications i mean of course decentraland and and axie infinity have been around for a while and they have been rewarding uh you know users and players to be on their platform uniswap is a great example of what's being built but i think again uh decentralized cloud storage uh, i believe uh, storage is a great example mm -hmm. um so yeah but i think from my perspective just a social media app Uh, that is based on decentralization so something like a koto or a mastodon would be something that i'm very very bullish on lovely um another important question that we did touch base upon earlier as well and uh, right now as well right we see right in the upcoming economies a lot of women are getting traction um so i think um, i definitely like to hear your thoughts on this we see a lot of women doing great work in the industry but women in web3 still seems to be uh, taking a smaller portion of the entire pie so what is your view on more women taking that leap of faith in this industry or do we already have enough women making the mark in that no we don't have enough women we need more women participation and it's not because women are not interested 
you know, women have enough things to deal with. Uh, and hence, this becomes, uh, this is low on their priority. But um, in a survey done, I think not, I'll probably share the link of the survey with you. 93% of women actually said that if somebody was to teach them and tell them and educate them about the, the advantages of Web3 and actually handhold them through the process, they would be very open to looking at crypto and NFTs as an asset class, which I think is great, you know? Um, so I think I, I think this is going to be a game changer with what, especially even at Koto with what we are building, when we say that we've launched our first set of 5,000 NFT uh, creator badges, imagine 5,000 women having their own NFTs using quota tokens to, to reward their community members, understanding what NFTs are about and understanding what crypto is all about. It is a huge, huge uh, advantage, you know, and we're, we'll be able to onboard 5,000 women and these 5,000 will then educate more women. Right. So, yeah. Wonderful. I think um, it, it's only the beginning of something big that you are envisioning. And I really hope uh, we, through this, through Koto, um, probably it can be one stepping stone for a lot of women to understand the space and uh, take their foot forward. Okay, let, let's explore what's happening here. So uh, before we wrap up, Ushaka, um, I'd, uh, if you'd like to share maybe a piece of advice for new entrants in general in the digital asset space or people who are still skeptical of what it entails, uh, maybe they're wanting to explore a career, try to start investing, build something of their own. So what would be your advice to them? Very simple. I didn't know anything about NFTs or crypto, but I do like reading. All you have to do is the moment you're curious about something, if you have a basic question like, what is crypto? Why are people investing in it? Please type it on YouTube and watch a video. You know, watch 10 minutes of something around blockchain, Web3, crypto, 10 minutes every day, 10 days down the line, you'll have 100 minutes of knowledge at your fingertips. And these little incremental uh, increases will is what will actually help you make an informed decision. And as I said, Web3 is happening. NFTs are here to stay. Blockchain definitely is here to stay. There is no other option but to arm ourselves with information and knowledge about this space. Definitely. And I think that happens with any new space or any new industry, right? There was no um, book that all of us had that we read through or understood the space. Everybody paved their way out, figured out a way, started investing, lost some money, and then just understood what's happening in the space by just talking networking community building i think all of this is the way we take web3 forward so on that note um i'd really like to thank you for this enriching conversation today you're definitely making that mark in the web3 space and touching many lives in the right way for many people to probably explore different paths in life and also venture into what the web3 world holds for them there's definitely a lot to learn and take away from your journey and i'm sure all, a lot of us would be thrilled to understand the Web3 landscape a little better now and explore opportunities in the NFT space as well. So thank you once again, Vishaka, for being a part of Curated X and this very insightful chat today. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for all your kind words, Chavi. It was really great being here.